Hey folks, thanks for tuning into BevNet's Elevator Talk live stream. I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of BevNet's Taste Radio podcast. I'm here with BevNet CEO and founder John Craven and Darren Ravel, a partner with Tastemaker Capital and senior executive producer with the Action Network. Over the next hour, we're going to be talking to food and beverage entrepreneurs from across the country about news and new products that each of those companies have to offer. Uh, I'm really excited for the next hour. Darren Ravel, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I love you guys. I love doing this type of stuff. So I am uh, as excited as I've been over the last two weeks, let's say. <laughs> well, that's, that's very exciting stuff for sure. Um, as I mentioned, you're a partner with Tastemaker Capital. Uh, what does the Venture Effect Capital firm do? So a couple of years ago, uh, we kind of noticed a, a place in the marketplace that really wasn't being served, um, which was just going into food and beverage companies, uh, really after friends and family, maybe before Series A, for Series A, uh, and putting a you know substantive investment in. So provable concept, but we wanted to get in early. And uh, we put our first money into Vienna in 2017, the chickpea brand um, that makes whole roasted chickpeas and puffs. And uh, we've recently put money into uh, Athletic Brewing Company, uh, which is a uh, non-alcoholic beer that is uh, kind of taking the world by storm as much as you can for a non-alcoholic beer. Very cool. Uh, John Craven, how are you? The founder and CEO of BevNet. You've uh, done a few of these with us already. Hanging in there, talk right? Live stream, that is. You're hanging in? Hanging in. Excited for another one. Very cool. Uh, you look like you're uh, doing some rock climbing. Is that what's happening behind you? Is that Back of my chimney. Ah, the back of your chimney. Okay. It looks Everyone's like a spa. Working. I thought it was a spa, right? Oh, it does kind of yeah. look like a spa. Yeah. We're catching you in, your, in the middle of your, uh, your steam there, your sauna. Uh, you know me, never, never miss a good stand. The, 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 next, the next activity, by the way, might be Santa coming down that chimney. That might be the next, next substantive activity in our world. So be careful. Everyone, everyone needs some Santa coming down their chimney right now. It's true. Uh, but in the meantime, in lieu of Santa coming down the chimney, we have our first guest of the afternoon. That's Natasha Case, who is the founder and CEO of Cool House Ice Cream. Natasha, how are you? I'm doing great, and I love being compared to Santa. <laughs> Anyone who brings ice cream should be compared to Santa. It's a beautiful thing to do. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Cool House, tell us a bit about the brand. So we are um, uh, a women-founded and led, uh, very innovative ice cream brand. Uh, we've been around a little over 10 years. We started with gourmet food trucks. Um, and we actually uh, towed a, uh, our, our first truck to Coachella, which is where we launched. It had no engine, so we towed it there with AAA, and the company really went viral from there. And we um, grew that um, truck business to have a, a, a flagship store in Culver City, where we do a lot of our innovation and community building, which is now delivery only, as are many uh, restaurants. Um, and we expanded into grocery about five years in. First with our signature ice cream sandwiches uh, with like really just great ingredients and unique flavors. And then on to pints, uh, flavors like street cart churro dough, the Queen's coffee that I have today that I'll tell you about more in a bit. And uh, now our dairy free line, which is made of peas, brown rice and cocoa butter in sandwiches and pints. Very cool. So uh, Queen's coffee, tell us a bit about that. I'm assuming it's coffee flavored ice cream. It is. There's this Queen's Coffee. It's just a classic creamy. Uh, we're going for something that a coffee lover can can celebrate because it really speaks to great coffee, but also for someone who isn't a coffee aficionado that, you know, they love coffee and dessert. It's sweet and decadent and just, you know, can really speak to everyone in that way. And um, Whole Foods connected <laughs> us to Allegro Coffee as a women-founded and a run coffee farm in, in East Africa, we sourced the beans from there. So this is kind of a global partnership selling women entrepreneurship. We launched it in, um, uh, in for International Women's Day month in March. And uh, the beans are called um, Queen's Cup. So this is Queen's Coffee. And then if you're in LA, you might've seen our really cool billboard campaign that said, ice cream fit for a queen, call us Megan. Uh, and that was a shout out to Megan Markle and the all the charity work she does. And she actually did reach out to us. It's wow. Actually, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did she reach out to you? Uh, she slid into our DMs. That is amazing. That, that is, is awesome. In, that is incredible. Uh, Darren, have, yeah. have people, has the queen, has the, the pr a princess slid into your DMs? I don't think she's not a princess. What's her official title? 
she's nothing now. <laughs> she's Megan, which is which is fine. I was actually, yeah, I was actually a senior at Northwestern when she was a freshman. Never saw her, didn't know her until you know this this came out. So um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, I got I got a question for you, Natasha. Do you like what is the trial and error here with like when you're doing a coffee, right? Like what percentage of ice cream eaters like a coffee ice cream? It's a really big category, um, actually, and mainly it's um, uh, owned by Haagen Dazs and their coffee yeah. ice cream, and that's about a, a fifty million dollar skew. And there's really no kind of um, like there's not a big competitor that just goes for that classic creamy coffee. Most coffee flavors you see on the market have some other component, other ingredient, other mix in. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, if those are appealing to the pure coffee eater or someone who wants more chocolate or more nuts in their coffee ice cream. But the coffee skew, that kind of like classic Haagen Dazs pine is about $50 million skew. So we expect to fully take over that in the next few months. <laughs> and I, and I, I have one more question because the dairy free definitely intrigues me. It's not like it's better for you. Ice cream is essentially like, oh, you know, uh, whether it's um, enlightened branding themselves, a keto skew or, you know, like there's a whole keto line or it's dairy free or where do you think dairy free? Because now there's all these words, right? There's dairy free. There's grain free in the chips. Like so where where does uh, the, the do you have to be a better for you in ice cream today or totally on the other end of the spectrum? Where does that fall? You know, it's a great question. I wouldn't say that I consider our dairy free ice cream cream necessarily a better for you per se. I mean, in some ways I would say like made better for the planet. Um, I think there's some amazing sustainability components of plant-based, but we're still going for decadent indulgence. We're still thinking about it as kind of, you know, rebelliously in that way. Um, I, what we found is the dairy-free eater, whether that's someone who just can't have dairy or someone who's vegan or even someone like me, which is why this kind of, I think started to some degree, like is a flexitarian who can totally eat dairy, but just loves and is very conscientious about um, uh, plant-based choices. Um, no matter, you know, what the reason that you're coming to that category, you're still looking for something that can really satisfy, like check that box of like, hmm, there's a satisfying indulgence that I can have that doesn't feel like a compromise in any way from eating dairy. And that's really, I think, where we built this. We said, if we're going to do plant-based, it better be as good as our regular ice cream. And we want to launch it with the same kind of innovative thinking, not just plain flavors, so really unique flavors. Um, and then also with the ice cream sandwiches, which are hugely popular at Whole Foods, for example, like our dairy-free horchata sandwich, which is snickerdoodle and horchata ice cream. It's just, there's just nothing like it. And it's really, really good. And then we're always going to think about plant-based for all our future innovation. For example, we have these single serve cups that are launching at Whole Foods pretty much right now um, in the future for our multi-pack sandwiches and any flavors beyond that. Um, so I think it's like going to be part of our, our DNA as far as like as a core product line, as opposed to saying that it's for a better for you purpose only. All right. Well, this is a uh, great information about Cool House. And uh, hey, where is the brand sold, Natasha? We've got about 10 seconds left. Sure. Uh, Whole Foods, Publix, uh, Wegmans, Kroger locations, and then a lot of specialty natural stores, uh, national co grocers in your area. And order it online also through, through of course, Amazon, Instacart. Very cool. Well, once again, thank you so much for being on the BevNet Elevator Talk live stream. Good luck with everything going forward. And let's talk again soon. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Darren, are you a, you a, you a Cool House uh, ice cream eater? I am. I don't. I forgot the flavor. The one that has French fries in it, milkshake. The milkshake yes. one with French yes. fries in it. I I love that flavor. I think there again. She's clearly into the whole niche of you know getting into a space and getting into flavors. There's so much of the same, Ray. You know, there really is so much of, of the same. It's interesting from an investment standpoint when you go into a a brand and you're and you're thinking, well, what's the exit? Sometimes, right? I mean ice cream is tough because there's so many people that are that that or there's so few people rather that that can buy you but still they're they're an, they're a tremendous brand i love that totally all right let's move on next up we have the co-founders of loopy that's isabel steichen and alexandra dempster did i get all the names correct now i think someone's muted so let's see do we have isabella no Alexandra? 
pitching with no voice is extremely difficult. <laughs> we got to get the pitch right for the pitch, that is. Exactly. Yes. Exactly, indeed. Uh, while we're waiting, Darren, uh, Gatorade, you've written two books about the brand. Yeah. Uh, interesting stuff. What was your most recent one? Uh, I actually wrote a book for the Gatorade Trust, the doctors who made $500 million. Um, and it was a private book. Uh, but it was, it, it, I've never done that before, but it was very interesting getting to know their story and getting to know some personal stories that I can't even tell you due to a confidentiality agreement. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I uh, read your first one and it is pretty fantastic. So if folks oh, out you. there haven't had a chance to, what's the name of the book again? First and Thirst. Hold on. Hold on. There it is. First and Thirst by Darren Revell. There it is. By the man. All right. Uh, Isabel, do we have Isabel with us? Not yet. Okay. Well, uh, let's keep on keeping on. Hold on. Let's see here if I can uh, unmute some folks. By, by, by the way, Cool House, uh, Natasha's really good at like when you say you want to try something. I mean, I'm sure Meghan Markle somehow got a truckload because, uh, you know, she's real. She has a great reputation of, you know, when people want something, when influencers want things, they deliver. Um, so, again, that's so important today. Yeah, totally. I, I feel like one of the things about Cool House that was always interesting to me is that they always went counterculture, right? Like, and I think that was sort of the Ben and Jerry's model, right? I mean, they stood out from everybody else in terms of package design, flavors, uh, and the fact that they weren't afraid to say who they are and stand on their own values. I mean, I think that's sort of the name of the game when it comes to success in food and beverage, right? You have two seconds, when, especially in the ice cream section, you know, where, there's so, where the big boys are dominating. Uh, you have to be so unique, and they certainly are. Yes. All right. You know, we're going to go to Matt Billings, who's the founder of Albo Almond Milk Yogurt. Matt, how are you? I can't hear. <laughs> okay. Well, he will. Really... <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, settle that technical issue in just a moment. John Craven, you're still with us, I hope. I'm still here, just letting you guys hash it out, I guess. Thanks. All right. Uh, did, what do you think of Cool House? I mean, it's interesting because, you know, we hey, hey, sorry, brand... sorry, sorry to interrupt. Ray, uh, we have some guests in the room. Matt, can you go ahead and say hello? That was hey, our uh, technical director there. Unfortunately, we can't. Matt couldn't hear us. Yeah, unfortunately, Matt can't hear us. Well, luckily, no one else has anything else to do. So, you know, they're <laughs> going to they're gonna stick with us longer than a, a normal time. You know, in normal times, people are gone by now. But Yeah. Well, actually, Darren, I want to talk to you. Right behind uh, your left ear is a can of Athletic Brewing Company beer, which is a non-alcoholic beverage brand that you're invested in. Uh, you know, what do you think of that non-alcoholic beverage space? Because, you know, it seems to be growing. Uh, there only seem to be a, a couple brands that are really making their way through it at this point. But um, certainly uh, Athletic is one of them. We, ju we just looked at Europe and we looked at the growth rates and, and, this, and the, the number of non-alcoholic beers in, say, Germany and Spain. And even in markets where it's traditionally alcohol markets, Ireland, and to see the non-alcoholic space being essentially in some cases, 25 times what it is in the U.S., U.S. being so small, the opportunity is not only to be good here and go there, but, but obviously also um, just the growth is, is, is incredible. We, we think there is a weekend warrior better for you kind of thing where, you know, as a 41-year-old man, I really can't drink that much on Friday if I want to be a weekend warrior on Saturday. So we love Bill Schufelt and the whole team there and uh, – we, we think the demand is there, and we actually thought, oh, sure thought that the, uh, the negative stigma against non-alcoholic was an advantage for us. Totally. All right. Let's try this again. All right. Now we have Philip Tevereau, who is the co-founder and CEO of Yo Lele Foods. Did I get that correct, Philip? You remarkably got both names correct. <laughs> How about that? Uh, I'm not familiar with the brand. Could you tell us a little bit about Yo Lele? Yes, Yolele is an African food company. We connect smallholder farmers in West Africa with a global market for their uniquely healthful, uh, nutritious, and climate resilient crops. And the first uh, such crop is an ancient grain called Fonio. That's gluten-free, low glycemic, uh, and uh, absolutely delicious and cooks in five minutes. Amazing. Uh, tell us about some of your products. Uh, what does your product line look like? 
Well, we've been selling bags of Fonio for since 2017, and we're about to go national at Whole Foods uh, with our bags of Fonio. But just at this show here around you, as you can see, uh, we're planning to introduce our uh, two new lines. One is a line of pilaf mixes made with Fonio. Uh, put West African dinner on your table in five minutes. Uh, and also a line of, of Fonio chips there. Uh, absolutely delicious chips uh, that are toasty and light and crispy, and they're boldly seasoned with West African flavors. What what type of uh, what type of benefits do you like? Where where does this fall? Obviously, something's foreign to people, and you have to say, well, this is like this in terms of protein or lack of carbohydrate, whatever it is. So, what what are the key benefits that that you guys put out there? Uh, because someone obviously has to get involved with saying something and and buying something that they're not used to. Yeah, well, it, nutritionally, Fonio is pretty interesting. It's pretty uh, densely nutritious. Its protein balance is similar to that of an egg. It's strong in the amino acids, methionine and cysteine, which are deficient in most grains. Uh, and it has around three times the protein, iron and fiber as rice or couscous. Uh, but really our key selling points are uh, that it, as a grain that it cooks in five minutes, that's big. It's an ancient gluten-free grain, low glycemic, cooks in five minutes. It's fundamentally healthful and nutritious. And as a company, we do what we do to change the world in West Africa. So it's a very much a feel-good purchase. Do you have a and package when, or a logo? Uh, I sent them, and they there should be a slide okay. Okay. Uh, somewhere that we can. Our audience can see it. Uh, Darren, Darren, you'll just have to imagine it for I now, if, if that's okay. You uh, can't possibly imagine it because it looks so good. <laughs> Philip, what do you, <laughs> Philip, what do you think is the you know? Whenever I see something that I don't know, a name that I don't know, um, I think it's it it's harder to get me there to buy in a 15, 20 second environment where I got to make a quick decision. So how do you get over that? Is it, it's so good and word of mouth? Is it packaging? Is it uh, the five minutes thing? Just how, how do you get over that obstacle? Because I think that is always the most significant obstacle. Well, in terms of our Fonio, we do a lot of demos and we are able to show people how good it tastes and that it cooks in five minutes. Uh, but we are very heavily reliant upon our packaging, which is extremely interruptive and communicates in your face that this is hip, cool African food. Uh, I, I may not be the most appropriate spokesperson for that, and I'm not. Uh, my partner, Chef Pierre Cham, is a chef from Senegal. Uh, and we started the business together for that purpose to bring African food to a wider audience. Philip, you're definitely hip and cool. I wouldn't uh, take care of yourself. <laughs> um, tell me about the two product lines that you have. I mean, I'm curious outside the flour itself, why do you choose uh, rice and chips? You know, one, uh, a food that's a side or can be used, you know, with a particular entree and the other a snack food. Yeah, well, uh, again, we started out just selling plain Fonio, and then it's not rice, but it's pilaf mixes. It's just Fonio with seasonings and spices, cooks in five minutes. And that helps a lot of shoppers make that fast connection from, well, what do I do with this bag of grain to how am I going to put dinner on the table tonight? And this in the pilaf and mixes uh, prepared foods category, it makes it very clear that you're making dinner tonight. Uh, so it, it, it's an easy communication. On the other hand, there is nothing like a fast moving category to generate impact uh, and in a fast moving category like chips that everyone participates in uh, pr pretty much. And that uh, allows you the opportunity to have a strong billboard to put your message out there. Uh, so we, after looking at a lot of different categories, we settled on chips. So you know, as a young company, what's most important for you at this point? I mean, are you looking for retail distribution? Are you looking for investors? You know, what's key to the next stage of growth for your company? Well, a couple of keys. Uh, yes, added distribution is great and important. And another one, we're devoting a lot of work to the supply side, where we're building a factory that can meet the kind of global demand that we've encountered from major food companies coming to us looking to include Fonio in, as an ingredient in their products. And the current supply situation is not really up to par. So we're building a transparent, direct to farmer supply network and processing using technology that can reduce a tremendous amount of waste 
that is currently characteristic of the Phonio processing situation. And do you, how much of that product do you own or how much of the Phonio supply chain do you actually own just in case this actually gets hot um, and someone just says, ah, we'll just, we'll figure it out. We'll go around you. Uh, well, it's always possible. It's a commodity, which is yet another reason to focus on value added products as a company. Uh, but we are partnering with people on the ground in West Africa uh, who are, who already operate a supply network of 12,000 farmers uh, and adding to that. Outstanding. Philip, it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything going forward. Uh, please stay in touch. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Phil. Outstanding. All right. Hey, uh, Darren, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, we had five minutes with Phil, maybe six. Would you uh, consider investing in the brand? Probably not. Um, I've I've had a hard time with the education part when there's a a new name of something. And if it's not like, okay, like you could say it's similar to rice, but it's more like a substitute. So I, I would say no. I, I mean, that's one of my things where when you think you have to have a whole bunch of education, given how quick a shopper has to make a decision, it's, it's a lot of work. And even if you have disruptive packaging, it can be challenging. All right. Uh, good stuff. Let's move on. I think we have Matt Billings. Uh, I'm sorry. I believe we have uh, Isabel Steichen and Alexander Dempster, the co-founders of Loopy. Do we have you guys? Yes? Yes, you do. Uh, yes. Outstanding. Isabel, did I get your last name correct? Steichen? Yeah, you did. Outstanding. That makes me really happy. All right. Loopy, uh, what do you guys do? What's the brand all about? Yeah, so we are here to help people live more plentiful lives through the power of the small but mighty lupini bean. And we decided to start this company because we saw so many customers out there um, and consumers out there looking for more plant-based sources of protein that are less processed. And so we just launched in January 2020 with our first three flavors. So this is almond butter, cinnamon, raisin. I don't know if you can see. Um, tahini, lemon, cranberry, and peanut butter, cacao nib. Very cool. Uh, and this is something that was going to launch this year, or you already launched. Uh, where can people find your products? Yeah, so people can find our product on our website at getloopy.com. And then we are also in about 50 independent health stores in New York City and in some other um, select cities. So that's a, that's a substitute for what, a, a cookie? Or what is that? I would say, um, so it's a substitute for a processed protein bar. A lot of consumers are looking for more protein, especially when it comes to eating plant-based. I think there's this real worry around not getting the right type or enough of it. And what's so incredible about lupini beans is that they have the highest concentration of plant-based protein out of all beans. So like twice the amount than a chickpea, for example, just to give you a perspective. Um, and consumers are also looking for fiber and most other protein bars are using protein isolates. So they are stripped of all fiber and lots of other nutrients. And so we, we are delivering protein in a more whole format, in a less processed format. And where is that in the supermarket? Where is it beside? Because whenever you say like, a bar i get nervous because of the crazy yeah. you know all the sports bars and you know try to get a half percent but it looks like people buy a box of how many or are they buying one off single serves um yeah so in the supermarket we are actually located in a different area so we are by the bar section but we also are um in some in some uh retails that we're working with we are positioned around the salad bar as well as the um fruit and vegetables because we really think of our product as something that will replace an apple in a way. Um, so a consumer is looking for a whole food plant-based snack, but is also looking to um, get the protein fill that they need. Um, they, are, they are going to grab ruby instead of an apple or a banana. And then why did you go into more of a dessert than a snack, right? Like I think about uh, the, uh, what, what's, what's the new enlightened name, Ray? Bing, big Bang the 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 broad bean um whatever their the their broad names. bean um it's it's the enlightened it's like uh oh, i can't remember it's like a sopranos type name um, okay 
but 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 why into the into the the dessert category instead of the I think there's like Brahmi beans, which is I think the same type of that's in a in a in a water of sorts. And so instead of going into the snack, doing it more into the into this area into the sweetness. Um, I would I would argue that the tahini lemon cranberry is actually an interesting hybrid between sweet and savory. Um, that's the feedback that we've been getting so far. Um, and we just talk to our consumers and to our core audience that we are we're trying to, to address. And they were telling us that they were looking for this um, more, you know, for the sweet snack in the afternoon that is less processed and, and doesn't um, peak blood sugar levels so much. So um, that's how we how we narrowed down the flavors. We were playing around with some savory flavors as well, but we we decided to listen to what our customers were telling us. That would be the think, first flavor I would go after, by the way. Yeah, for I think sure. Also, anytime we're playing with a new format, we really thought about what's familiar to consumers and how do we add value so that we're not just another commodity product. And this is that new ingredient, but a familiar format to introduce the, the bean to the consumer. And it's something that people are looking for. We know a lot of people have abandoned the category and have a lot of fatigue for it. And especially as people move more plant-based, there's not a lot of whole food options with that protein delivery that they're looking for. And we're delivering nine to 10 grams of protein in one of those little um, 50 gram bars right now, just from a whole bean food source. Outstanding. Yeah, I really can't wait to try some of the products. Uh, great job with the package design. And it looks like you have a, a great start and a great foundation going forward. Alexandra, Isabel, thank you so much for joining us on the Elevator Talk live stream. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. You know, it's interesting, Darren, you know, there was a time, I think, when people uh, would say, why would I ever eat a roasted chickpea? And lo and behold, sure. there's Vienna. And right. I think, you know, with loopy, it's kind of the same question. People are wondering, are you going to eat a lupini bean, a lupini bean snack? And you know what? Remains to be seen, but it looks like they're off to a great start. And by, by the way, I think the education part is a little bit better on that, where you just say it's a nutritious plant based. I think people are willing to learn a little bit more. Um, I would say their main challenge is going to be the supermarket. I mean, you can come up with the most amazing product, but if you're not in the right place or you're kind of in between, it gets very difficult. And I, in, in general, I said I would never invest in a bar type product because everyone's going for like 0.2% of the market. It's one of the craziest areas of the business. So I think their success might not even be based on whether it's good or not. It's going to be based on where supermarkets will place them. And um, it's frustrating because there's only so much control you can have. Indeed. All right. Uh, good stuff and great feedback, Darren. Uh, now we have, and we'll move on to Allison Ellsworth and Stephen Ellsworth, who are the co-founders of Poppy. Allison, Stephen, do we have them? Oh, they're just about to join us. Uh, Poppy, uh, notably a winner of Bevnet's New Beverage Showdown competition. Darren, uh, you uh, you judged one of those before, haven't you? I did. I love it. I just like yeah. it. I love it. It's, it's, a, it's really fun, and uh, everyone's so excited, and the stakes are high. They, they really are. It's uh, We get 12 beverage brands coming together, early-stage beverage brands, one winner, $10,000 in prizes. Uh, it's a lot of fun to watch, and it's, you know, it's real crunch time kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. So... We're going to move to uh, Allison and Stephen in just one moment. Uh, there they are. Allison and Stephen Ellsworth, how are you? They get, uh, let's see, they're unmuting themselves as, we're, as we speak. Play by play of the unmuting. <laughs> it really is. Do you get a trophy uh, too with the $10,000? You do. You do. You get this wonderful trophy that uh, is engraved with your name. You get to have it for life. You can keep it in your office if you have uh, some kind of... Ray, what happened to Ray now? I haven't done the checks in a while. I like the check, but you really can't do much with it. You certainly can't cash it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the most important thing, isn't it? You know? All right. Do we have Allison and Steven with us? Not just yet. All right. Um, but, you know, I want to talk about Bienna. I mentioned Bienna, Darren. Uh, you know, you invest in that brand. Again, uh, chickpea-based uh, platform. Uh, roasted chickpeas are their primary, uh, are their primary product. Um, you know, what really interested in you? Was it the brand? Was it the product? Was it the leadership team? I, I saw them at the 2016 fancy food show at Jacob Javits. And I couldn't believe there was a whole food product that tasted like that. 
It was flavored perfectly. There was nothing else on it. It was actually the full chickpea. And to me, the problem with all the, the big guys is they have a issue with having a whole food product, learning how to flavor it and turning it into something. They're really good at taking uh, a, a substrate and crunching it up and, you know, making uh, some sort of form out of it. But uh, I just felt the fact that they could do what they did there um, was amazing. And we followed poor V Patatia for a year and uh, she's, she's an amazing leader and, you know, the leaders are important too, Ray. And um, so we think in both Bill and poor V, we have people who are great to, to lead companies. And I love the product and I love the second ger- generation puffs. And we have a third generation that I'm more excited for than the puffs. So that I can't say. When can you say? When they say, <laughs> okay. come on, investors never leave. The company does. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, I think we're going to go to uh, the founder of a company called Dewdrop. That's Celeste Perez, who's the co-founder and CEO. Celeste, how are you? Thanks for joining us on the live stream. Yay, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, Dewdrop, what do you guys do? All right. Dewdrop is a sparkling adaptogen and superfood infused beverage. Uh, and it was developed by an ice cream scientist as well as a functional MD. So our goal is to create and address women's health through uh, herbs and botanicals. Um, And, you know, we wanted to do that while creating something that was beautiful and elegant as well as delicious. Most adaptogen beverages are frankly a mix of mud and liquid. And so we wanted to make it easier to make the easy choice, the healthy choice. Um, So Dewdrop takes scientifically studied uh, herbs and botanicals like ashwagandha, rhodiola, and reishi. And then we combine them into some beautiful flavors using aromatherapeutic aromatherapeutic superfoods and uh, whole fruit juices so that you get the full absorption. Um, And then each can is uh, naturally sweetened and only has less than nine grams of sugar. So uh, we were actually supposed to launch at Expo West. Uh, So this is month one for us, or at least three (laughs) weeks into month one. I know, right? What timing? But uh, we're female owned and bootstrapped. And so we're still going for it. And uh, we've completely pivoted to be direct to consumer right now. And you can get one of our kits these babies on our website at heydewdrop.com. You can get one of these. It's a wellness kit and includes the three flavors. And right now we're doing a get one, give one project with a couple of food banks here in Los Angeles. And we're donating up to 3000 cans um, to help those families who are affected by coronavirus. So that's a little bit about us. (laughs) That's awesome. Hey, I have a question about uh, the taste. Does it taste good? (laughs) <laughs> That's the entire point. Okay, <laughs> like okay. I, you know, we have a food and beverage background. All of us, I, you know, I have a branding studio and we really, that's what we do. We work in hospitality and I love adaptogens and I was kind of really tired of taking, like taking mud juice in the morning. And so our food scientist is super, just, just magic. And so we tasted every single one and figured out how to get the flavors to work so that they tasted really great. And, and they're you, great in cocktails. <laughs> and you feel that people want to, I mean, people are very busy. They want to combine uh, they don't want to take pills and then have a, have their drinks. They want to kind of combine it. Ray, do you remember the, what was the, uh, what was that drink where you twist it in and it activated the, do you remember that? Yeah. You, you, you nailed it. Activate is the activate. name of the <laughs> Yeah. So, so that didn't make it right. But that, that was, that, ha- that was hot because you could actually see, you know, you twisted it and then you could mm-hmm. actually see all the ingredients fall. So, um, you you feel though obviously there's there's a marketplace where these are the hottest the the three that you named what is it ashwagandha rose yeah. Uh, and, yeah those are the three hot like hottest ones on the next level mm-hmm. so um so you feel there's a demand for this we do and you know it's crazy as it's right now is so interesting because of um, everybody does care about their health and they're more interested in wellness. And um, I think a lot of times we were told that, you know, a pill would help you. And we're trying to look towards more herbal, more, uh, you know, ancient medicine. I think a lot of people are more open to alternative therapies right now. Um, I mean, it's, it's not unlike taking chamomile tea because you believe that that makes you feel, uh, you know, less stressed. Um, and that's, it's kind of something we've done as human society for thousands of years already. Uh, and I think we kind of have to just refocus on that because for me personally, every time I take another pill, it's kind of just, it doesn't make me feel healthy. Um, but this makes me feel healthy. You know, it makes me feel a little better. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't quite make me feel like um, there was a problem I had to fix. This is kind of, I think of it as, um, you know, boosting my own personal wellness, what was already here inside me. 
What's and I have one, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have Darren. one more. I have one more. You said sure. right now it's direct to consumer. But yeah. Where do, you, where do you see kind of the genuine rollout being of the brand? Like, do you see it? Is it in spas <laughs> first or is it in supermarkets first? Where 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 is it first? And how do you kind of get the word of mouth and not just like hope for it to be in CVS first. So what, what's the rollout? <laughs> oh man, the rollout. It, well, basically we have a lot of great, you know, we totally think that this is a gourmet's uh, adapted in beverage. And so we want to be in specialty grocery uh, where people have a higher, you know, expectation and also a premium palate. Um, and then also we want to be in food service uh, at hotels, restaurants, uh, at bars. I think it actually really works that way. And then on top of that, you know, um, there's a low ABV kick or a mocktail uh, trend right now that I think these really work for, um, you know, just uh, so I just think that those are really our markets. And uh, it's funny because spas are great. Uh, you know, studios are great. But, you know, um, I do think that the specialty grocery is really where we want to be. Celeste, uh, I think you're off to a great start uh, <laughs> a month or so in. Hey, three weeks. I'm sorry, three weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, HeyDoDrop.com is the name of the website, right? Yep. All right. I'll definitely check it out. Great stuff, Celeste. Good luck right, with everything going you. forward. All right. Ray, am I getting samples of all these as part of my payment here? A hundred percent. Of course you are. Darren. I mean, I, I do have to. I do have to leave it on the doorstep for twenty four hours, then Lysol every place where it could have been touched. But still, I, I am taking samples to my house. A small part price to pay for all the delicious stuff that you're seeing and hearing about. <laughs> uh, speaking of delicious things, uh, now we have the founders of Poppy, the co-founders, Allison and Stephen Ellsworth. Allison, Stephen, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Great, great. Uh, you're on with Ray Latif and, as you know, Darren Ravel. Uh, Poppy, the original name of the brand was Mother Beverage, recently rebranded to Poppy. Tell us about what you guys do. Yeah, so I'm Allison. Yeah, like you said, I'm Steven, and we are co-founders of Poppy Prebiotic Soda. Uh, Poppy really flexes on flavor while keeping your gut, immunity, skin, and digestive health on point with its powerhouse ingredient, apple cider vinegar. The way we kind of look at it is we are soda, but all grown up. Um, you kind of mentioned earlier that we used to be mother over this last year after getting a deal on Shark Tank. Shout out, Ro. Hi, Rohan. <laughs> uh, we actually uh, rebranded to Poppy. So we redid our name, packaging. Um, our function is still apple cider vinegar. And our taste profile is more like a soda. And so we rebranded into currently this can that you see here. So great looking product. Uh, Darren, what do you think of Poppy in the uh, what they're doing over there? So I know Rohan Oza very well. So uh, congratula <laughs> congratulations on that investment. Um, I would I would say so. What do you think when people think apple cider vinegar? I know that kind of excludes me because I've had one experience and it like <laughs> takes me out of the whole. It's almost like if you have a horrible coconut water experience, it could take you out of the whole category and ev and forget it. You're never trying it again. So my question is, how do you get? Because I think it's very important. Because I think a lot of people have had bad apple cider vinegar experiences. How do you get those guys to? say no we're not you know we're not all the same yeah so that's that's really what this whole last year was if you look at our packaging there is apple cider vinegar nowhere to be found on right. the front of the package right so we have yeah. this beautiful package that is eye-catching uh super gen z kind of millennial design that just entices people to grab it off the shelf right so yeah, i mean i think you know talking to taste really anybody that has tried poppy they the first thing they say if they know the acv is in it they're like this is incredible i had no idea i can't wait to share with people and so it's you, you honestly cannot even taste the vinegar even though we have one tablespoon per can but it just, it really tastes amazing. It, people drink it with a meal. It's not medicinal. It's just like a yummy go-to alternative that's healthy. So we, we, we don't a, get the vinegar thing that much anymore. Yeah, we have a tagline that says Poppy's function is in stealth mode. So it's for all of you guys out there. That's literally, you look at the package, it looks beautiful. You crack it open, you try it. You're like, man, this is amazing. Then you kind of start to read the package. You turn on the back, you're like, oh my gosh, this has apple cider vinegar. So with yeah. our previous brand and mother, that's what we found, right? Apple cider vinegar is really polarizing. 
but people want the health benefits because it's noticeable, right? People know it's good for you. Yeah. People consume it and they genuinely feel different and better rather than trying to sell a product. That's just a bill of goods, if you will. But, no, yeah. <laughs> my, my, I got so we're going to send you samples because we know that you're wrong. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take the samples. Um, I, so my other question is, and, I'm, and I've already asked this question to someone else. I'm always concerned about it. Where are you in the supermarket? Obviously, because uh, the seltzers really concern me. They're now their own aisle. But God, I mean, to be able to blow through there. Uh, or are you in the sodas or are you in right. like, you know, in the shop rights and the other, the better for you kind of, you know, in the whole foods, you're, you're in much better position, so, but where are you? Yeah. No. So what's been crazy with all of this, you know, expo getting canceled, it was kind of poppies, big coming out, ready to go. We got distribution in seven regions of whole foods, sprouts nationwide. And we were rolling out in the middle of March, literally right now. And everything kind of got shut down. And so we've been like working to pivot and so within the different stores, even like Wegmans, we're, we're kind of in different areas because is what we've learned is we are going after that soda drinker that wants something healthy, but we have function, right? Um, but we're not priced the same as, say, like a sparkling water. So it really, we really see ourselves as something really new and innovative, and it's something that I think we're going to have to build for ourselves. Yeah, it's it's really the challenge, right? We we are an aseptic shelf stable product and we're in a soda package, right? But our price is not like Allison said, it's priced out of the soda market. So it's really trying to find this balance. What 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 is the price? Like two dollars a can? So it's two ninety nine right now. Two ninety nine a can and it's sold separately, not in a as four pack or six pack except for it. on amazon obviously sold in 12 pack but yeah. we have a few we have a few retailers are very interested in six packs as well but since we are a new brand just launching you don't want to go too crazy too wide too soon so um our main focus is just single serve obviously getting into that cold case next to where people can grab with their lunch or something like that yeah that's that's really where we see ourselves is in that grab and go cooler that that kind of uh you know, higher premium price point uh, really incentivizes trial. It's amazing with lunch. I don't think I've literally tried another yeah. product that like pairs better with Good lunch. And I'm, with I'm not pizza, just saying that. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. Shameless plug. I know. Yeah. But, um, no, but what we found is people really like our drinks because it has the function. You can have it with, um, you know, a meal. Kids can have it. But also they want to drink one every day. So that's when we've seen a lot of success with our direct to consumer as well as Amazon because people want to buy it in bulk and drink it every day to, to really feel you feel different when you drink our drink. You feel better. So I can attest to that. Uh, it's great stuff. Allison, Steven, winner of uh, Beverage New Beverage Showdown, one investment on Shark Tank for uh, no less uh, a man of Rohan Oza's. Uh, capabilities. Uh, incredible stuff you guys have uh, done to this point. Look forward to seeing how the brand develops going forward. Thank you so much for joining us on the Elevator hey, Talk live more, stream. One more thing we have to say. Okay. Tune in next Friday. We are actually going back on Shark Tank for an update. Oh, wow. all right. Cool. You Very guys cool. Stay tuned. So check it out. Yeah. We definitely yeah. will. Uh, well, we'll tune in. And guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll get some of those samples to Darren. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye. Darren, do you watch Shark Tank on a regular basis? I do. I do. Yeah. It's a show. I know Rohan. I know Chris Saka. I know Mark Cuban. I know um, Matt Higgins. I'm very close with Matt Higgins uh, from RSC, Stephen Ross. I, it's a great show. It's a show I've always wanted to be on. Well, we've got another Matt uh, in the queue here, and that's Matt Billings, who's the founder and CEO of Avo Almond Milk Yogurt. Matt, how are you? Good, how are you? It's it's actually Ayo. Ayo, excuse me, Ayo. Then it would be avocado yogurt, right? <laughs> uh, how long have you guys been around? Tell us a bit about the brand. Uh, the brand is is relatively new. We've been in stores for about three months, but uh, it's coming from our own family farm, fourth generation, and we've uh, been around since about 1913. Very cool. Uh, so almond milk yogurt is what you do. We've seen other almond milk yogurts on the market. How is yours different? I think the big difference with ours is, is the taste. We have uh, four, four different flavors right now. We have organic vanilla, organic strawberry, organic blueberry, and organic peach that we blend in with a creamy French style uh, almond yogurt. We toast the nuts before, so 
one of the things that customers really like when they keep telling us is that you have a burst of fruit flavor, but it's also this subtle toasted almond flavor. So we, we're not trying to be something we're not. We're trying to make it taste like almond yogurt. So we love our almonds, and we hope you guys do too. So the, the yogurt aisle is basically the first or second fastest growing part of the supermarket over the last five years. I think switching with one and two with sleep aids, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, yog yogurt is now its own aisle. They, you know, the Chobanis of the world have gotten people to actually buy when they say, you know, 10 for 10, you actually do buy 10, even though one is still a dollar. Um, so, I mean, it's crazy to see the growth there. How do you get on the shelf and stay there? And then when you become a winner, how hard is it for people to, or for the big boys to rip you off instead of buy you? Uh, I think getting on the shelf, that's obviously a pretty big challenge. I mean, with, with any new product, but uh, one, we are the only uh, almond milk yogurt that has organic almonds and we're the only almond milk yogurt uh, or any, any uh, non-dairy yogurt that I know of that is farm to spoon. So we grow the almonds and through our company, we make, make it and then we send it, send it to the stores. So we're in control of the whole chain. So I think that's the one to, that's kind of our sales pitch of getting in and that it tastes good. I think we're trying to make a product that tastes really good and isn't trying to be something else and using all kinds of strange gelatins and, and thickeners and then to stay uh, on the shelf and keep big guys from uh, ripping us, us off. I think it's that we are the organic farmers and that's, there's not a lot of organic farmers in the state of California for almonds. Uh, it's a smaller percentage of the whole almond industry. So I, I think that's the supply of getting the almonds is probably a little bit of a, a strong point. The fact that you're actually uh, the, the farmer uh, that actually does mean a lot because especially with the cost of almonds being the way they are, uh, you're you're in control of that supply chain that is especially with almond milk and the growth of the market. Yeah, you have to move with the, the prices, but at least you're not having to go through someone else to get them. Is that as someone starting out, how much of an advantage is that for you, especially in a volatile space where more and more want, there's more and more want for the almonds? Uh, I, I think that's probably a pretty good strong point because almond prices are fairly volatile. It's a commodity. So if you get caught as a, uh, a startup and you're trying to buy the almonds from a third party and you hit high prices, it's, it's difficult. So you, you mentioned, Matt, that uh, taste is a strong point for you guys. Um, you know, a lot of people that are eating yogurt like it for obviously the, the protein and calcium content. I mean, how does yours uh, fare among competitors? Uh, protein, uh, we're in the ballpark with everyone else as far as protein. Uh, calcium, we're, we're strong. Uh, vitamin E, we're strong. We're lower in sugar than any uh, other uh, almond milk yogurt on the shelf. Um, how does it compare to a milk, a, re, a standard milk yogurt? Milk yogurt, I can look right now. Our uh, total protein is, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's uh, four grams. So I think you get some of the higher milk ones there, probably 10, somewhere in that range. And it's really hard to get, even though each cup of our almond milk yogurt has 20 almonds in it. Uh, so there's, as far as a percentage of almonds in the yogurt, it's really, really high almost an ounce of almonds per cup, but to get, and from a plant-based protein, as much as a, a dairy protein, that's pretty difficult to get the protein that high without using some of the real bitter astringent uh, pea proteins and things like that. Now, Avo, I mean, I'm sorry, Ayo, uh, is that, uh, did I get it right again? Or did I say it wrong? Ayo, no, you're right, Ray. You want to make hey. it an avocado yogurt. And maybe maybe we should go into business on an avocado. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I mean, you've got you've got the capital. I've got the know-how. Let's just do it. Uh, but, we've, but Matt, you know, uh, getting your product on shelf, you mentioned you want to be on there uh, and make sure the big guys don't crap, crap your space. I mean, but that's kind of tough. I mean, you know, what's your pitch to retailers? I mean, how do you get them to put something on the shelf that, frankly, is a is an unproven concept? Uh, I, I think one is you have yogurt categories growing extremely fast across the nation, and you also have almond milk uh, and non dairy alternatives are growing very quickly across. So we're kind of a combination of both those. Um, we're hitting basically all the the 
the sales points you really want. We're vegan, we're non-dairy, we're uh, non-GMO, uh, non-GMO project, uh, certified, certified non-GMO project, sorry, uh, gluten-free, vegan friendly. So, but also, and it tastes good. And that tastes better than most of the other alternatives because we have so many almonds and we're not just trying to fill it up with thickeners. <laughs> Outstanding. Matt, great stuff. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on the live stream. Good luck with everything going forward. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, thanks, guys. Matt. All, All right. right. Darren, uh, is that, is that, I think we've, we've gone through six at this point, but uh, I think we're going to keep on keeping on because we've got Ryan Crane, who's the founder and CEO of Tempo. Do we have Ryan with us? Just a moment. Just a moment. Was it, is that from 2001 A Space Odyssey? That's Hal. <laughs> Just a moment. Just a moment. <laughs> I think it is. Um, what Mr. Drinking? Rooney's office, please hold. <laughs> Mr. Rooney's office, please hold. Sorry, that's the 80s version of it. Uh, you mentioned 10 for 10. You, do you really buy 10 yogurts? No, I, I just know that people do. I mean, I know that like it says 10 for 10 and like it's, it actually is not a deal, but I see people like putting the 10 in there. Uh, that's it. The, the, the almond milk yogurt's an interesting one because how many people are using almond milk like to put the little bit of their coffee and how many people are using almond milk? I actually drink a full cup of, of almond milk, like all the almond breeze, sweetened vanilla, eight ounce cup of almond milk. I think most people are using it as a, you know, better for you or less caloric milk to their coffee. Um, but I, I, I think that will actually at least get space and then, you know, see if the, the marketplace likes it. Yeah, I mean, you know, with oat milk as hot as it is, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, if almond milk, you know, continues to have the success that it has had over the past decade. But uh, I mean, all, oat milk seems to be on fire. I mean, it, on I don't fire. Know, the, the recent numbers we've seen, it's just insane. Up for 350 percent or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It's it, especially at this time. I mean, you know, with uh, people looking for shelf stable options or plant based options and uh, oat milk seems to be shelf stable. People are looking for things that last two months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Right now on the live stream, we have Shauna Martin, who's the founder and CEO of Daily Greens. Shauna, we're so great to see you. I can see you, but I don't know if she can, we can't hear her just yet. Uh, can you hear us now? I don't know. I, I think she's getting there. But um, let's go on back to, but going back to oat milk for a second. Do you buy oat milk on a regular basis? So oat milk I did buy, but then I switched it for almond milk. Really? You yes. went the other way. That's interesting. Because uh, fewer calories. Really? Okay. Okay. I, I know, yes, you mentioned that's uh, something that's very important. To I you. used to have my oat milk latte at La Colombe. And uh, then I looked at the WW Weight Watchers points, and I have not yeah. had it in a while. Do we have Ryan Crane with us from Tempo, the founder and CEO? Who do we got? He looks like he's with us, but oh yeah, no, I just saw him for a second. Yeah, he popped down there for a moment. Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> Do we have Bob DeBoard from Suja? No, not just yet. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Darren. I want to talk to you about your investment strategy because you know it, it's clear that some of these brands that you've invested in have had traction on the market prior to you mm -hmm. um, investing in them. I mean, what's the earliest? What's the earliest date that you would invest in a company? I, I mean, I probably need, I need 3 million in revenue, probably, you know, like two to 3 million in revenue proof of concept. Um, and then, and then, then we're looking, but not, we're not like really, really early, you know, but usually after friends and family will, we'll get in if we like it. Usually after friends and family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, and hope maybe before series A, maybe it's a lead series A. We led series A in Vienna. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and you were involved in athletics recent round as well? Yes. Both. Yeah. Both, both their A and B. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty impressive round that they just pulled off as well. Uh, Ryan, do we have Ryan from Tempo? Not just yet. And Shauna? I think we have Shauna from Daily Greens. I thought we did. No, we did for a second. Shauna, can you hear us? We almost heard Shauna. There's Tempo T. <laughs> let's go back to you darren one more second we actually lost john craven for a moment uh but darren i want to go back to you um you know it's the the, the most important part of a food or beverage a food or beverage success in a lot of ways as you mentioned 
is that moment where people are cho choosing whether to buy that product or not. And that's in the package design. I mean, what do you think are the most important elements of package design? I think they constantly change, right? Like we have a whole debate every, all the time as active investors basically saying, hey, do you think you should put grain free as big? Or do you think you should uh, put chickpea as big? And usually it's font sizes. And, you know, I think where the where the two investments that we have in Athletic and Vienna have stood out is they've looked at the totality of what's on the shelf and they make themselves stand out. I think it's sometimes these products, these companies are looking inward and say, what's the coolest package we can design? And then they all wind up being the same colors around them. So I think if you really have appreciation for how quickly those decisions are being made at this at the buyer level at the supermarket level um and you also realize what's around you i think you're going to be in the best position yeah i mean you know this notion of being disruptive on shelf using your package design is something that everyone wants to you know that that's that's the strategy that everyone has but it is pretty tough to create a disruptive looking package um you know color scheme I mean, I, you know, of the brands that we saw today, did you see anything that really stood out for you? I mean, I know you didn't get to see Cool House uh, on, uh, on, on the video, but I know you know what it looks like. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, again, it, it, is, it is so hard. I think that if you're poppy, you have to be so much more disruptive because where are you going, especially if you're a single serve among the seltzers? Um, or if you're in a, uh, in, in like a beverage fridge, uh, it, you have to be more disruptive because you're in a category that's so difficult and listen, competition today is, is insane, but I will say that perhaps you could be more disruptive now. How will habits change in an online shopping world? Hi, right, this is Bob. And we have Bob, who's we the CEO Bob. of Suja Organic. Bob, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing good. We're doing good. Sorry Suja, the technical difficulties. Yeah, indeed. No problem. Uh, uh, Suja, best known for their cold pressed juices. Um, tell us a little about uh, the brand for folks who aren't familiar with it. Okay, great, Ray. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity here. So I want to make four quick points if I can. Absolutely. One is, um, as far as Suja goes, we were on a terrific growth trajectory prior to the virus, uh, up over 30%, because people were really looking for fresh, organic, functional beverages. Uh, but since the virus, that, those numbers have more than doubled. And uh, we see that continuing through the rest of the year. So fortunately for us, we have good, healthy beverages that people are looking for. So what I want to do is highlight three different things within that. The first is shots. Our shot business has exploded. We have record demand and uh, it continues to, to grow every single day. We've doubled our capacity overall. Uh, we have two new entries. We're about a third of the share nationally. So I'll show these real quick. One is a multi-pack four pack. Uh, that's for our immunity defense. And we're going to have more products with that as well. Uh, but multi-pack and shots is, is kind of the next move after singles. And then secondly, our vitamin C shot, uh, which we are introducing in the next uh, couple of months. Obviously, there's, that's going to have a, a lot of demand now, particularly with people looking to be more healthy. All of our shots have great ingredients in them, things like vitamin C, turmeric, elderberry, ginger, coconut water, zinc, uh, et cetera. So lots of great stuff. The second you know, our label redesign. So uh, Suja, these are hitting the shelves right now. We used to have all of our ingredients on the front of the label. It got kind of busy is what we heard. So we, we're now highlighting the top five ingredients in a white box called out. And then underneath that, uh, we'll have paired with some of the smaller uh, ingredients. It'll be a lot easier to read and we've got great consumer feedback from that. And then the third thing is our elevated nutrients line. That has just been introduced in Whole Foods as we speak. And then at mid-year, we'll roll it out to the rest of the market. But uh, that basically combines flavor and function together for a personal wellness regime. Uh, it has a lot of the same functional benefits as our shots, but it's combined with great flavors, things like raspberry, strawberry, uh, carrot mango, blueberry, et cetera. And with those, we have immunity, we have detox, we have energized focus, and we have hydrating beauty. So we're excited about all these new products and 
know that consumers will really flock to them and be very successful. Bob, there, I have a yeah, oh, I have a question on now the new kind of online shopper, right? There's always been an online shopper, but now there's an online shopper that maybe hasn't been online before, maybe doesn't want to show up in the supermarket, whether it's uh, Amazon Fresh or Instacart or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that help you out? Because in a search, they'll type in like vitamin C or health drink, and that kind of gives you an advantage versus like a shot where it's small. Yeah, there's um, Vibe Organic or whatever. There's others in the marketplace. But does search and where we're at in this country bring you to a forefront that the supermarket really doesn't? Well, we have the Suja.com uh, where we will certainly highlight all the our products and, and the various benefits. But we are working with a lot of our retailers uh, to, to build better brand awareness so people will look specifically for our products uh, as we go forward. And then we're going to have a full-blown marketing campaign at the right time to, uh, on social media and other things to, to gain further awareness. But you're right, there are a lot of products in the marketplace today, um, and we, we need to stand out above those. We are number one in the, in the market overall with almost a 50 share nationally in total cold-pressed juice. So we think we have a big head start here and, and we'll continue to, you know, really try to build on that going forward. So people will look specifically for our brands as well. And then how sustainable is that with the packaging? Like how, how long does a juice last? Uh, they have different uh, time frames, but uh, because we're HPP, uh, we generally get somewhere around three months, which is, not that, I mean, it's a pretty long time compared to, um, I guess, pretty much. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's a long time. And, and, and we do a make to order model. So when people order it, we can pretty much have our products right to the customer within eight days. Uh, so we, as far as having shelf life, that has never really been a big problem with us because of the HPP and cold pressed. Great stuff. Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, great job on the uh, brand revamp and uh, the shots as well. It's good stuff. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You too. All right. Darren, do you drink much cold-pressed juice? I don't because I didn't get into the 7 or $8 of, you know, like the juice press or the, I don't know. It was never, I, I took my vitamin C and never really bought those, those brands. Uh, but I do think this... The shots are very different. I mean, I, I think the sh some of the shots have the apple cider vinegar or the cayenne where I'm like, what? Oh, I can't take it. But, uh, but the shot business definitely has a future because I think people want stronger and faster. It's just like an alcoholic shot, right? Like <laughs> they, 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 they just want stronger and get it over with quick and get me drunker, get me healthier. Totally. I mean, the function in a two ounce or three ounce shot is really, you know, what you want and you don't really need that much liquid to do it. So exactly. And yeah. Vibe Organic, I know, is on fire, those guys. Yeah, a lot of that stuff out there. I mean, you know, the other interesting thing about, you know, the cold pressed juice category and juice in general is that, you know, the knock on it and in, in recent times has been the amount of sugar in it. And you see cold pressed juice companies really trying to reduce that sugar count either via shots or smaller package sizes or just reformulations as well. Yeah. My, my main problem with spending was also like why I was spent, why I'd be spending so much money on the, on the cold press. And I'm talking about the fresh cold press, like juice press. It's like, well, you're actually paying for the waste that's left over at the end of the day. That's, that's why it costs so much because they're building a product. And I always felt like the, the uh the fulfillment wasn't the greatest and that's what you were paying for they really never figured out well someone might not but there's oh there's a hundred watermelon juices still there that's not going to be good for tomorrow well I, you know it's at the end of the day though i mean it's easily understood uh nutrition right i mean some of the things that we're hearing about in terms of you know next gen ingredients ashwagandha apple cider vinegar things like that um, you know, people have to learn about this uh, and brands have to educate consumers about those ingredients. Right. Versus whereas, a crunched up fruit. Like, hey, you're on the go. We squeeze this and here it is. Yes. Here's vitamin C. You know what it is. Your parents have been telling you forever. Vitamin C is good for you. It'll help you during a cold or otherwise yeah. just in general immunity. 
So, I mean, it, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see where the rest where this category goes because it has been a bit stagnant over the past few years. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the other things that's uh, really interesting to me about just seeing the development of brands, I mean, Suja launched, uh, I believe it was 2013. And, it's, you know, in the past seven years, we've seen them get investment from Coke and Goldman Sachs and, and you know, Trevor Nelson and Josh Golden. <laughs> those guys, yeah, from ACG. I mean, yeah. these investors seem to uh, latch on to really innovative, fast growing concepts. Um, but, you know, what are some of the concepts that you're seeing out there that are really interesting you and that have uh, long-term potential, sustainable potential for you? Um, I mean, there, there's some brands that I really, really like uh, where, for example, and this is the, the, the one that, that has me confused, like from the ground up, the cauliflower pretzels and the mm -hmm. butternut squash pretzels, right? Like I want it to taste like cauliflower. My wife wants it to taste like pretzels. It does taste like cauliflower in a pretzel form. I like that. So like that conflict, by the way, because I think they're doing good stuff is like, well, what do you want it to taste like? Do you want it to be like the whole, like we put vegetables in these kids' fries and we tricked them? Or do you want it to be like, oh, it feels like it's like cauliflower as a pretzel instead of cauliflower in a pretzel. I don't know. That's one of my things that's in a pretzel in my mind. Right <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, but it, that, I feel like that's one of the interesting brands i mean i'm looking at brands brands that build categories um i've honestly been looking so much into the non-alcoholic and just getting out of that that i haven't had my the the awareness out i'm kind of wondering what the next beef jerky is please don't label anything that's just dried as jerky hey guys this is shauna <laughs> oh we Shana. Got, and we Sorry, yes. we've had some technical difficulties. That's okay. No, that's okay. This is Shauna Martin, the founder and CEO of Daily Greens. Shauna, how are you? Good. Good, good. Uh, Daily Greens, another cold press juice brand. Speaking of Darren mentioned, you know, brands that are helping build categories. You certainly did. Uh, you've got some big news that's been going on with your company. Tell us a little about it. Yeah, we've been in the kitchen inventing all kinds of new things. Um, are you guys getting an echo? Is that only me? Uh, I think we're good. You, we can hear you fine. Okay, great. So I studied up on a new ingredient called butterfly pea flour. It's so fun. And I came up with a whole new line called Rama. It was pretty. That is pretty. Um, it's cold brewed tea. Um, we HPP it like we've always done everything in the daily green world. So cold brewed um, and so there's no caffeine, no sugar. Again, it's never been heated. So we cover all the no things. And you so, have oh, and by the way, no artificial colors. Well, that's a blue one. How do you have no artificial <laughs> colors in a blue tea? And purple. Look, purple look and green. That. Wow, where where is the color coming from? So the butterfly pea flower by nature is blue. And then I changed the pH adding maybe a little lemon. This one has a little bit of vinegar in it. And then other wonderful adaptogen ingredients, the stuff like hibiscus, which has mostly basil. And so a combination of the other ingredients and changing the pH basically creates the rainbow. I think that's a show-stopping package. I'd probably buy one of those. And then you got to get me on taste. So what is it? What does it taste like? Is there a comparison? Is it just like plain tea and water or what, what, what am I expecting? I hear no sugar sometimes and I'm like, maybe I want a little sugar. Maybe who's the consumer? It's definitely a purist that it doesn't want artificial anything. No sugar, no caffeine, no weird color ingredients. Um, it, because it's cold brew, it's a really nice clean taste. And then the other thing, um, is that you know? Well, let me let me jump in. What percentage of I'm not, I'm not saying it's what percentage of America is that is that person? Is it is it five percent? Is it ten percent? Where where is that? And I know by the way, if it's five percent and you get all of them, you know you have a, a five hundred million dollar brand. But I'm just saying. I think it's I think it's our regular customer that we've always had. It's someone that's really looking for something healthy. Um, that isn't loaded with sugar, 
if you go to your camping, you don't know what kind of high, then crash you're going to have. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's going a little more mainstream, so just see. And it's a little palatable, so it's fun. So, you know, if you're fun, probably female demographic, um, it looks really high end. We kind of did this fun logo on the back, so almost like your Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah. Um, and this is a really cool foil, so it's very iridescent. And where, so, where, where is that? Where does that debut? Does that, does that go through the specialties and the spas and the gyms? Um, and the, and then where would it be if it gets to the mass supermarket? I think it'll go through first specialty and natural channel again because it has you know nothing you know none of the bad things in it. And then I think it'll end up in the tea aisle. I think the, what I'm hearing from buyers is you know they they focus on a really cool cold brew. Brewed coffee set the last couple of years. Now they're going to do a really cool cold brew tea set. And cool, I don't know if you know how much that much about cold brew, but it's really, it's really enhanced. It tastes a lot better than the proper tea. Um, What's the price? And then not to mention all the wonderful benefits of everything in the food. There are adaptogenic ingredients. The butterfly tea flower itself is really high in antioxidants. It's been used in the Southeast Asia for many years for vitality. What's the price point per bottle, Shauna? I think we're going to end up about three ninety nine on shelf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's about that's about right. Uh, my que my question also is from a, and again, you're you're segmenting yourself by being in the specialty. But have you? What is that? I have more stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, those are the lemonades. We didn't even get to the lemonades. Shauna, please tell us about them. I know. Finish yeah. your thought, and then we'll jump to lemonades. No, you know, get to the lemonades. Get to the lemonades. Yeah. So we also invented. Uh, a lemonade. And we really think this could be huge and this could be really big in grocery. So when you look at the lemonade market, there hasn't been innovation in a long time. And so I wanted to do something that's low sugar, low calorie. And that's what these are. There's actually four flavors and then we're launching an original soon. So that was pretty fun. So we slept with our roots and had really fun ingredients, adaptogens. This is spirulina and jicama and ginger. This cherry lemon. We got a strawberry ginger and then turmeric. You know, what's life without turmeric? So we have all of our great adaptogen ingredients that I use among fruit, basically to sweeten these, and that got the calories count way down. All right. So let me, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you right. And so there's just nothing like it from a lemonade perspective. These are great tasting lemonade, almost no calories or sugar. So my, my take is your greatest weakness is the garbage that has been out on the market in lemonade and tea and your greatest strength is the garbage that has been on the market in lemonade and tea right. that's, <laughs> that's, that, the, that's a great the, point darren <laughs> yeah shauna uh, unfortunately we're out of time but uh, great seeing you great speaking with you uh nice work on the teas and lemonades i can't wait to try them. love the branding yeah yes thank you all so much for having me thank you for being with us all right uh, Darren, you know, that the, the striking package design for sure. I mean, you know, that's the first thing I would see that say, I've, I've got to pick it up. I've got to try it. You know, it's interesting stuff. Yeah, that's really good branding, but it, it is amazing to see. And I know this is a small, uh, marketplace that they're going after a small segment, maybe a big marketplace, but you know, like what Arizona and Snapple has done to the tea market. It's like, well, that's not really tea. I guess technically it's tea. This is a different type of tea. This is almost a a different category because it tastes completely different. And one of the things that I've had to do as a child growing up with two Snapples a day, you know, has uh, is to kind of change my definition of tea. And I think she has to do that with some part of the mass um, in order to win, I think. Even if they're in specialties, they still have to be like, okay, this is a healthier version and I still like it. Uh, I think it does help that a lot of people have the uh, are drinking more and more coffee without the sugars and the creams. Um, and then that that does migrate over to tea and the matcha world too helps her. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. We have Stacy Marcellus uh, from Capello. She's the co-founder of the brand. Stacy, are you with us? I am. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Very good. Capellos. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with the brand, but for some of our audience who members who are not, tell us a bit about uh, Capellos. 
Yeah, so at Capello's, we are the makers of grain-free, paleo-friendly, fresh frozen food. So meaning we we freeze our food in the freshest moments and don't have to use um, preservatives as a result of that. But we have a line of frozen pizzas, pastas, and cookie dough, uh, all of which we use almond flour as our base ingredient to bring the nutrition into some of these staples that we're all familiar with. Um, what it what 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 is what is the kind of better for you frozen pizza space like because I don't know if I've I mean the Amy's right I guess like who 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 do we have here who are your competitors in that space Yeah so um I, we're definitely kind of on the premium side of the of the frozen pizza set um our price point's 9.99 which is um which we think is really attainable, but it is at the higher end of the set. And um, we are kind of up against the people that are, are putting better ingredients in their pizzas. So we use almond flour, like I mentioned, as a base. Um, we have, we also use eggs and, and, and starches that have um, high mineral content in them. So we are the competitors of the set. I mean, you might want to call flour is probably one of our competitors. Um, Against the Grain is another grain-free product, but the thing about uh, Capella is that's so unique is that we have the cleanest ingredient profile on the market. Stacy, you have a bunch of new products uh, in front of you. Tell us about some of them. Yeah, so at Expo, we are really excited to debut two of our new pizzas. Uh, one of them is the white pizza. It starts out with a, a, a cream baked with sauce, and then we top it with whole milk mozzarella, caramelized onion and spinach. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. The cool thing about this product is that it is nightshade free. So if you're following a plant paradox diet or um, just avoiding nightshades to help with inflammation. Tom Brady, if you're Tom Brady. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So that, that, that means that has, I, I did before Tom Brady, I did not know what a nightshade was. So that's no tomatoes yeah. or mushrooms. It's uh it's tomatoes, it's eggplant, it's peppers, a lot okay. of things that cause inflammation in our body. Got it. Yeah. And then we also have our take on the margarita pizza. So we use fresh tomatoes, fresh basil, and then roasted garlic. It gives, it's a, a really complex flavor, but still kind of like that fresh um, simple pizza that you would expect at a restaurant. Um, but can, can you can you can you talk to us about the the gr how long have you been using grain the word grain free? Well, since the beginning of the business for us, which um, is when? Which is when? Yeah, so we started the business nine years ago, back when grain free. Uh, was right, which is crazy. Right, which is crazy because in the last year, I started the last year saying, "Why would you advertise? Why would all these brands start saying that grain-free was the key proponent and putting it in these big letters?" And I think maybe through Siete, Siete tortillas or whatever it is uh, that those chips, grain-free now is uh, you know brands that have never been grain-free are now using it as like one of the keys to you know, trying to draw people in. I thought at the beginning of the year, even it was like crazy in the beginning of 2019. And then after I was like, wow, look at this. Look how much people care. I think I did a poll on Twitter once and I said, do you care about grain free? And I thought maybe there'd be 10% that would say yes. And it was over 30%. So that it is amazing that phrase and the rise of it over the past year. So it must be interesting to be a brand that's been using it for a decade and now see, see the growth of it now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, our team are, <laughs> we have a really passionate team and we all are big believers behind the science of a grain-free diet and what it can do for your health in terms of reducing inflammation and increasing energy and cognitive function. So, um, yeah, like I said, you know, as a, as a brand, we're really trying to shift the paradigm um, of the frozen food set into a more nutritionally relevant space. I got since, you, since I, you're almost out of time, but uh, you've got some yoki and spaghetti in front of you too. Uh, those are new products as well. Yeah, they are. So yes, like you said, this is the sweet potato yoki and then the almond flour spaghetti. These are fantastic offerings. Um, the spaghetti cooks in ninety seconds, so it's one of the most convenient meals you can make for your family right now. Ray, can I have one more question? Absolutely. How do you get your brand in front of people now when frozen, like a frozen pizza? I would argue that over the last two weeks, the frozen pizza is going to the top of the relevance that it's ever been. 
right? Because like, I don't want someone else to touch my stuff right now. I love that it's frozen. It was touched days ago. Like I'm now going to heat it up. I, I like the time away from someone touching my food. How do you possibly get into that wave or is it like too late and people are just going to order the frozen brands they always know? How, how do you ride this wave? Can you market against it? I mean, we're, we're in the wave right now. I mean, it's hard for us to keep pizzas on shelf, not because we are having manufacturing issues, just because you can't get it delivered to the store fast enough for the, the velocity in which people are purchasing it. So well, yeah, we're, we're in the wave. Awesome. Your question. Yeah. Stacy, uh, great speaking with you. Uh, love the new look of the packaging, by the way. I know you released that a few months ago, but uh, great stuff. And uh, let's talk again really soon. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Yeah. Well, you know what? That white pizza, that margarita pizza, Darren, that looks like some tasty stuff for sure. I know I, you're a pizza I, I aficionado. It, it, is, it is amazing to see over the past couple of years, maybe over the past six to eight years, the frozen pizza business from 19... 50 from the first one to to 2000 really didn't move much and it's it's amazing to see how it's how it's done over the last couple of years and you can see that by the the growth of space and obviously cauliflower is on fire cauliflower is absolutely nuts at this point all right uh rounding out the show is ryan crane the founder and ceo of tempo ryan how are you doing great guys thanks for having me thanks for thanks. letting me clean up here well, thank, thank thanks, you. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for yeah. hanging in. Sorry about <laughs> you guys the technical difficulties. Yeah. Great stuff. Tempo, uh, what do you guys do? Yeah. Uh, here's a little sneak preview of what I'll be talking about here. Um, so we're at Tempo. Um, we create cannabinoid-infused beverages that go beyond CBD. So it's not just about one ingredient, one effect, or a singular function. We know that life is a little bit more complicated than that. So we like to think about what are the combined benefits of natural ingredients, building off of cannabinoids as, as a base and creating recipes that allow them to work together. And to be clear, this is not a biohacking story. This is about naturally enhancing your body's natural function. So all of our recipes are built around simple natural ingredients without any artificial sweeteners, additives, processed sugars, or anything like that. Um, and on the subject of cannabinoids, because that is the key part of what we do. All of our products are analyzed by a third party lab to verify the CBD content. So, so it's a, CBD. So, so Ryan, it, it's CBD. Yeah. And then give me another, like, what else do I have after that? Yeah. So what we start with there is we think about, okay, what are people using CBD for? And the two main functions today in the retail space are daytime productivity, nighttime. stress, relief, how do I get more done during work and nighttime before bed, like you said. So when we think about, okay, let's take that daytime function. What are people looking for? Okay, well, they are looking for that balanced, maybe stress mitigation so they can focus, but they're also looking for other things. They're looking, how can I stay awake and focused? So we use matcha and green tea, a good combination of caffeine and L-theanine. The reason we're using uh, tea as our caffeine source because it's a longer lasting, more solely absorbed uh, version of caffeine. So it's kind of has this longer lasting effect. And we'll also play around with Ayurvedic herbs, uh, ginseng, and things like that, too. I've stayed away from CBD just because I'm concerned about the FDA and all the talk that they've had um, just from an investing standpoint. So yeah. as, as, a, uh, as, as a person behind a product, what, what are your thoughts and, and where do you think – it's obviously not THC, but, but where do you think we will ultimately settle on? Will it forever be – kind of something that the FDA does, it's like supplement. Is it always going to be like in in the supplement land where it's like the FDA doesn't approve this and that's okay and we continue to go our way or where's it going to be? The FDA, so we kind of share the same concerns as the FDA that what hap has happened in the space is that people have had a bad experience. The consumer experience is the pain point here. People don't know what they're getting. They don't know what it's for. There are outlandish claims being made. And it's the FDA's responsibility to tackle all of that. And that was kind of thrown in their lap when the 2018 Farm Bill came about. Right. Said, okay, hemp's legalized, FDA will figure it out. Well, you know, for the FDA, it usually takes them a couple of years to get things right. And, and, then, then, and, the, and the problem becomes that if the FDA doesn't regulate it, they can't really come that far down on clamping down on people who make bad claims. And that's what I'm just worried about in the marketplace, yes. because if I'm an honest guy, 
you know, like I can't be con- in control. It's like why I didn't want to be a sports agent. There's too many people who are going to pay people under the table. And, you know, you know, like and I'm so how much of your time do you spend worrying about how the marketplace is going to police itself? I a, a lot, Darren, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, the F from the FDA's perspective, this might sound odd. I kind of feel like we're with what we do, the approach we take, we're working hand in hand. FDA uh, comes after people that do a, one of a few things, um, make what egregious health claims, lie about the content of the product or target vulnerable populations. Everyone that has ever received a warning letter has done one of those three things, mm-hmm. typically more. So we try to steer very clear from that. It's very transparent what we do. Uh, example of the can here, you'll see there's a little QR code. Um, and if you scan that, it would take you to the lab results. So it's, we're, we're putting it on the table. Oh, I like know, that. I like that. That's great. And now when you think about when you're doing like cannabinoid infused beverages, you're kind of straddling two worlds, one foot in the cannabis space, one foot in the retail food space. I would say we're kind of leaning on that foot in the cannabis space. But that's kind of what we do. I am very involved. If you guys follow any of the content I put out, very involved in the cannabis space locally. I work with local advocacy groups. I get involved in educational seminars. And we really want to, you know, part of our mission is to help normalize what this plant is, because it's a lot more than just a recreational thing. More people think about the cannabis plant as something that can be used for therapeutic purposes than anything else. So to answer your question, Darren, a lot of energy is spilt on is spent on getting kind of that grassroots education out there, because that's what we fight. There's been so much misinformation and disinformation in this category, and a lot of people that don't trust cannabinoids and CBD are right not to trust them because of what they've been given. So and you, know, that- you, know, you, know what, you know what I like about you? Because I think there's a lot of people in the space who have gotten into the space because it's the space they feel like they want to be in and it's hot, and they don't take the responsibility of the education and the greater marketplace and everything else that's going on. If you don't devote half your time to that, then you're not going to make it in this space. So I, I, I applaud Thank you. You're you the guys. first person in this show today where we've talked more about like the space than the actual product. But I think you can't talk about the actual product without talking about the space. Exactly. Especially at this, there are just so many questions. There's so much confusion. So that, that is something, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I spend a lot of time on that. It's something that I'm particularly passionate about. I got into this space for a couple of reasons. One, I have an academic background in neuroscience. So brain science is a very, you know, it's always been a part of my life. And two, I, I've been using this stuff since, it was called hemp oil uh, personally to help me get through the day. So when it became this thing that emerged on the scene and people started putting CBD into everything, it, it kind of irked me that the products we were getting were really derived from the recreational space, not the functional space. It was a lot of CBD brownies and CBD cookies and things like that. And didn't really have the feel of what I believed it should be, which is more of a functional product. So there's that we're kind of fighting the past, the stigma of the past, the products of the past, and trying to educate for the future. Well said, Ryan. Uh, Great stuff. Great presentation. Like the new products. um, And can't wait to see where the brand goes from here. This is a uh, CBD infused uh, sparkling matcha with raspberry and lime. What's the price point on that quickly? Sorry? What's the price point on that? MSRP is usually about $450. Okay. $450 a can. uh, can. for For the level of the... We can go, we can talk all day about different cannabinoid emulsions and how, like how complicated they are and bioavailability and things like that. We use the, you know, best of the best that we can find. So he's saying it's good shiz. It's good shiz. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed he is. And I hope it is. Uh, Ryan, once again, thank you so much for joining us on the live stream. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, thank you both. I appreciate your time. All right. Darren, we did it. I can, do, on, I can do this every day. I love this stuff. Hey, well, let's let's uh, sign you up for next week. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, fantastic stuff, fantastic commentary and critique and advice. Uh, Darren, you're awesome. I just, I, I don't know whether any other way to say it. Thank you Thank so much. You. For no, I, 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 I love being uh, a part of this, especially with a guy who knows more about food and bev than I do. Um, so, uh, no, I, I love Nosh and BevNet and Brewbound and all the brands and I love you guys and um, you, you guys are probably the, the only guys who have more samples than I do. So I respect that. <laughs> well, apparently you're going to get some samples in your mailbox in the coming days. So look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. 
All right, uh, to our wonderful audience who's been, who's been tuning in and staying with us for the last 90 minutes, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to do this again on Tuesday, uh, March 31st at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Tune in then. Uh, on behalf of our fabulous team, John Craven and, of course, Darren Ravel, I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of Taste Radio. We'll catch you next time.